Hey guys, Dan here. Welcome to the next episode of the Beginner's Guide. Uh, today we're going to have a look at how do you learn a new track, how can you improve your lap time, stuff like that. But before we start with that, um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Also make sure to enter that giveaway. It's still up for a few days, so check the volume one of the Beginner's Guide. Um, and yeah, I'm live on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can also just tune in there, ask questions or check out the other Grip TV streamers. There's usually always somebody uh, online. I'll post the link in the description below. And there's also a community Discord you can join. Link in the description as well, who would have guessed. And if you like this um, series, maybe give the channel a subscribe. That would help a lot. Like the video. And maybe even use my referral link to sign up for iRacing if you're interested in that. It doesn't cost you more money and it helps me with uh, setting up this rookie account, well, this beginner guide account <laughs> to, to have more tracks and, and show you more videos and stuff like that. Okay, so questions I received is how to progress through the license system. And most of you um, asked for the GT way. So um, let's go to the website. Official race guide. So you do start in the MX5 Cup, the rookie class. If you want to focus on GT driving, the typical path probably would be drive MX5 till you get the D license. If you have the D license, you switch to the BMW 12 Challenge. It is a 12 minute race, only the BMW M8 fixed setup. Get your C license by doing these races, then you can go to IMSA. IMSA is the first multi-class series on iRacing. You have the DP, the GTEs and the GT3 uh, cars in there. Wait, why does it not show? Oh, hide ineligible. Ineligible. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, IMSA is... Where is IMSA? There is IMSA. So this would be the C series and you can get your B license by doing that. And if you have the B license, you can basically drive anything. That is ILMS, another multi-class series with uh, two types of prototypes, LMP1, LMP2 and the GTE cars. And also the GT Sprint series, which is GT3. But to be honest, I wouldn't recommend to do it like that because you get the licenses pretty fast. And I think if you have the C license and stuff, you probably shouldn't hop into multi-class series as fast as it's possible. My recommendation would be stay in the MX-5 till the B license. It is possible. Um, if we go to the profile here. Uh, you see we are at D 2.87 now. And it says... Class D, you need four more races or four more time trials in your license class or above. Your safety rating is below 3.0. So there is no um, D class series in the MX-5. But what you can do is you drive the rookie races until you're, you reach D 4.0. And the way iRacing is set up, wait, if we go to current series, you can enter the next series if your safety rating has the previous license with 4.0 or higher. So you can see D-Class is starting at rookie 4.0. I mean, there is no rookie 4.0, so I racing please, but whatever. If we go to C-Class, we have the Advanced Master Cup. And you can enter this one with class D 4.0 or higher. So farm safety rating in rookie masters until you have 4.0 and then do this series. That would be my recommendation. And you do need the MPR. MPR is minimum participation requirements, I guess. Uh, this MPR thing here. Uh, you get the D MPR also by doing C class races. So you can do four of these races to get the four required races for your D license MPR. And then, oh my God, that sounds more complicated than it actually is. But then you get the C license by doing this. And then your C license, you can do this anyways. This will still count towards your MPR to get your B license. So yeah, Rookie Master, farm till D 4.0, then switch to Advanced Master Cup and you can just spam these races until you reach your B license. And from then on, we'll see which series might be the best as a beginner. Spoiler, I think GT3 is the best one, but uh, yeah, that's something for an upcoming episode. 
Okay, so, but if you hate, if you really hate the MX-5, I mean, to be honest, when I started iRacing, I wasn't a big fan of it as well, but yeah. If you really hate it, you can, you can drive BM, BMW 12.0, but be aware, I've done a few races in the series and the driving standards can be really, really bad, even in top split. Yesterday I had a race, I, I nearly ended the stream after that because I was so, so salty after this race. There were people brake checking and sending it into the chicane where you... You had to avoid them by cutting the chicane and then they were, oh, sorry, I'm not going to give you the position back, but I'm sorry, yeah, sorry, your mom, but whatever. Uh, you can do it if you want, but I would recommend stay in the MX-5 till you have the B license. So what we are going to do next is I'll show you how to learn a new track. Okay, so what we want to do is Global MX-5 Cup, it's at Okuyama Short. I've never driven that layout. I know some parts of the track, but yeah, let's just get in there and do a few laps. If you have no clue of the track, I would not recommend to jump straight into the practice, but just go uh, in a test drive in a private one. Then you can do whatever you want and nobody will complain. Okay, so here we go. We are on the track. Click test, first gear, and let's go. Be careful on your first laps, guys. Um, try to memorize the layout of the track. Maybe look for reference points, which we can use as brake markers later. Stuff like that. Just be careful on your very first laps. Okay, so the short layout basically cuts the, the long back straight out of the layout. Okay. So when you drive, you look for stuff like See this 100 sign, for example, we can use that as a braking marker of 50, stuff like that. Regarding cornering technique, I guess most of you are familiar with it, but always try to maximize the radius of the corner, so... From the outside to the inside, apex to the outside again to to get the best cornering speed. I'm probably a bit a bit shit here in the MX-5 because I really don't drive it a lot. But uh, yeah, okay. So that was the very first lap. Let's just pretend we know the layout now. And then we try braking points. Let's try to brake at this part of the track here. I think that probably will be fine in the end. Fifty sign. Yeah, should be okay. Stay in second gear here. Sometimes you Sometimes it's not worth to shift up if it's very close to a corner because then you might lose more time by shifting up than by running into the limiter for a few milliseconds. So consider stuff like that as well. Okay, so turn one. Let's try the the cone on the right as a braking reference. Yeah, that works pretty well. Maybe a little bit earlier. Okay, dirt on the bottom. Yeah, that's okay. I have to work on my H pattern, H pattern technique. Okay, I think the 50 sign on the right side was okay for here. Yeah, kinda. Remember MX-5, you start with cold tires. Okay, braking marker for this corner is kinda hard to find. Okay, we'll try shortly before the blue cone on the right this time around. Yep, better. Okay, 
Yeah, this works pretty well here on this track. So I'd say as soon as you know the layout, figure out your breaking points, go to the public practice or I'll show you. Oh, we can maybe use the tower on the left as a breaking point for this corner here. Oh, that is That was too fast. Fast in, slow out. You always try to maximize your out, uh, your your corner exit speed, because you might gain a few tenth if you break as late as possible into the corner, but you will lose so much time on the straight here now. It also helps us uh, check the replay. Go to cockpit cam, and then you can see where you break. For example, here. About, yeah. 20% of the, of the screen, well, 15% left on the right side before the cone would hit the, the corner of the screen. There we start breaking. Breaking point was pretty good for that corner here. So work with stuff like that. Use the replay to learn the track. And yeah, there are driving schools out there, just to name two, the VRS driving school, the pure driving school. Nice resources, but they cost monthly and well iRacing isn't cheap to start with so I show you something else how to get how to learn a track by getting a reference from other drivers okay let's exit this and instead of hopping into a practice session we are going to use the ghosting function uh I wish I knew the this feature earlier because you can learn a track and the secrets some drivers are using pretty good using that. You will want to go to uh, find official races, then watch Ghost Crew Spot and on Road Series races. And then you have all the races that are currently going on here. Quite a lot. Um, we want MX5. So, or maybe un unclick Q time trial and open practice. Then it also should be uh, less stuff. There we go. So here, event type race, make sure it is that. And then you want to check the sub session ID. Those are the splits. So use the lowest sub session ID. That will be the top split. So in this case, it's the four zero. Then you click on this uh, green symbol. Watch now. Requesting a spotter, Fabio. Go watch Tombstone on Twitch. <laughs> watch now. If it's multi-class, then you can select the car and everything, but not really important here. And then it looks as if it's loading a practice session or a race. Yeah, click on watch. And fast forward. Okay, so the session loaded. Here we are. Um, did I mention that in, in an earlier guide? I don't know. Uh, the car number is basically how how high is the driver's eye racing so you, ca you can't really say car number one has to be the best one but he has the highest eye rating so there's a high probability that he might be the fastest in here even though tyson meyer quirky ties on twitch he's part of grip tv as well oh nice paint here in pokemon um i don't know if he should be <laughs> the best the best uh, reference for this um but yeah so what you want to do is either check the qualifying times. So this guy here did a 201.2. So he seems to be fast. And what we're going to do is spectate the race. So race starts in about five minutes. I'm going to fast forward to that now. Okay, so qualifying is over. We we'll probably have to watch these three guys. Clement, Mitchell, Ryan. Uh, another nice thing about these uh, ghost races is you can actually ghost the race. What a surprise, right? Uh, click test drive. And then you can just drive with the guys together. And you can follow them, watch their racing lines. And you don't have to be afraid of like destroying their race because you can just drive through them. So yeah. So as you can see, I'm in the relative, but I don't have a number. So that means I'm a ghost. Just be careful with uh, if it goes too much and then forget you're at an actual uh, 
real race and you think, hey, I can just drive through them. Don't do that. We'll just ghost the race for the first two laps or so and then we're gonna watch the replay and I'll show you how to spectate the others and how to get their breaking points and stuff like that. Okay, green flag. So see, we can go now. And as you can see, you can just drive. On your right. Clear. So I'll try to follow them. It's a very nice way to... Pre oh, okay. Clear. Rookie's gonna rookie. Top split, by the way. <laughs> um, also a nice, a nice way to drive with other cars, but not having to fear about wrecking or anything. Don't do this too much. I would always recommend to race as much as possible, but especially if you're not familiar with the track. Oh, nice gear there, Dan. This is a nice way to learn the track. I use that quite a lot. I mean, by now I probably know all the tracks. There are only very few tracks that I don't really know. But um, you can learn from that. See, this guy carries so much more speed. Draft is pretty strong in these cars. You also get draft even when you're ghosting. Unless you're within another car, then iRacing does strange stuff. I mean, it's probably not the typical use case of your uh, car simulator to be within that. another car. <laughs> but yeah, check their braking lights where they brake. Try to copy it. See, they are breaking a bit later here. After the 50 sign, I saw that. He right used it for myself. Oh, cold tires. They don't brake for this at all, just the lift. See? That's good to know. I braked for that corner. And... On your right. Fast Clear. in, slow out. Car coming through. <laughs> right side. Oh, Clear. that's... Right yep. Side. That's a good line there. Oh, it's Quirk. P8. But yeah, use this feature. Use it to your advantage. And... Yeah. I think the race probably cooled down a little bit. Let's finish this lap. And then we'll have a look at... At the spectator function. Also, I just shifted up in exactly that part of the track where I said, don't shift up here, it costs. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really new on this track. Okiyama, I've done like one race or so on the long layout, but I don't really know the short one. And I have never driven it in the MX-5. I was one of those who really hated the MX-5, so... I only did the rookie races in it and then did other stuff, but now I would really recommend to do this. Wait, we can we can have a look at the longer layout here. Yeah, that's the regular one. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So how can you use the spectate function? It's I mean it's pretty easy. You go to the leader, for example, here. And then you can go to race. Maybe let's select this lap 3. 1013, not a bad time. Double click on it and select maybe far chase. If you press Control F12, that's the default option, then you get the camera editor and you can just, with WASD, you can navigate it. If you press Alt S and W, you can tilt the camera. So have a look at that and check the driving lines from the guy. See, he's on the left, going right to the right side and to the apex. Maximizes his speed on corner X. It's slightly on the dirt. That is fine with these cars. iRacing doesn't simulate dirt pickup on the tires, so... I would always use the uh, far chase camera or the chase camera to see the driving lines they're using. 
Yeah, nice apex. Here for this chicane, well not really a chicane, but for these two corners they don't maximize it as much as possible. So that's also good to know. See no braking here. You can't see the, the pedal inputs unfortunately in, in replay mode, but... Yeah. Uh, missed the apex a tiny bit, but still still a good lap. Um, Use the... The rewind stuff to see where they break. So one, one, two, four, one, two, five, one, two, six. Ah, oh, he doesn't even. Is he taking this flat? Yeah, I think he's he's just lifting about here. If you listen to the engine, you can hear that. That's better in cockpit view. So go to cockpit view. Uh, here, here. So he turns in and then lifts a tiny bit. And full throttle again. And there we go. Let's have another look at the lap from cockpit perspective. Oh, yeah, you have to close the camera editor in cockpit perspective. I don't know why. But control F12 to close it again. Okay, let's play the lap. Okay, so he breaks about here. So if you check the cone on the right, nearly a similar breaking point than what we used. He uses third gear for this corner. And he will break here. Oh, no, 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 much later. So that's where we lose time. He's turning in quite early. Runs wide for, for the second... Oh, not really. Cuts the grass a little bit here. Still second gear, early upshift. Full throttle again, maximize. Corner exit speed and oh look how late he breaks here. So we pass the 50 sign, he's still on, on throttle and if you check it, breaks slightly after the 50 sign. I think I braked slightly before the 50 sign. So I remember that. He's in second gear I guess, yes. He won't upshift, yep. Okay. Just a tiny lift here. And he. Where does he start braking for this corner? Slow it down. Watch the speed. And then you can stop once you see that speed decreases here. So, about. Maybe let's, let's use this patch of yellow dirt or beige. Beige is that an English word? <laughs> As a reference. So, he's braking. Kind of in the middle between between this and this, so about here. Stays in third gear. Was a little bit too early on throttle, that's why he had to release throttle again and then went on throttle again. But yeah, okay, let's, let's try his braking points. So let's see if we can survive that one turn without braking and by just lifting after turn in. Yeah, we now have cold tires again, so all the others are on hot tires. So be careful with that. Okay, he was braking way earlier for this. Uh, that works. That works. Let's put up our delta bar. Okay, slightly after the 50 sign. Oh, that, I think that was still too early. The problem is I have the ultra white and my references are a little bit different than what you see. Because I'm obviously capturing only the center part of it. Okay, turn in, lift. Yeah, perfect. And in the middle of this patch. No, nope, stay in third. Okay. Oh, 
clutch. In some cars you just have to uh, release throttle to shift up. Not in this one. There we go. Just by watching the replay from that guy, we improved our lap time by more than half a second. And that's even on cold tires here now, so... Yeah. Two, uh, 101.8. Still half a second away from um, the lap time from... Who was it? I forgot his name. But yeah, I think using these ghost races, that's a very, very nice way to learn a track. And see how others drive it i mean you can of course you can do the same in the practice session and then select the fastest driver spectate him but if you select the top split for these races you do have well you do have the race situation and you do have most likely the fastest drivers because the practice session can be whoever so yeah that's my way to um that's my recommendation how to learn new tracks if you do it differently Watch this video. Leave a comment below how you do it. Maybe we can feature that on another episode. And yeah. By the way, this fancy standings overlay top left corner is um it's free. It's from Istvan Foto Race Labs. Um I can I can give you a link to his Discord because there you can download the software. If you're interested in that, you um you can show it on stream, you can also show it on your monitor, it's, it's very handy, it's like, kind of a little bit like caps, but, well, it's, it's free. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and if you have any other topics you want covered in upcoming videos of the Beginner's Guide, just leave it down in the comments below. Again, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Link in the description below if you have questions, comments, or join the Discord. And yeah, but that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.